This video is part of our course on modern C++ which goes from the absolute beginning all the way to a point where you can use advanced features of the C++ programming language. We even cover the four big features in C++20 and that is concepts, ranges, coroutines, and modules and we have a bunch of exercises to really help you nail this down. Please do check this course out if you are interested in this and you can also check out what others are saying about the course here. The link is going to be shared in the description below. In this lecture, we're going to be learning about shift operators. And these are operators that allow you to move bits left or right. Suppose we have something here. We have a few bits in memory, ones and zeros to represent some integral type. We can shift all these bits to the left and we can do it like this. For example, if we shift left one bit, we're going to move to the left one bit and the entire piece of data is going to move left. And one thing you should notice is that we have padded in with the zero here on the right. And uh, the zero we had here on the left is going to be thrown off and we're not going to be able to see it in our new view that we have on our piece of data here. So we can try and move again to the left. We're going to shift left one bit position. And this one here is going to be two positions from the start here. If we do that, you're going to see that this one moves around and this one comes closer to this end, but we've thrown off this zero that was in here and we have padded in a new zero here. Let's try again. We're going to shift to left one bit position again. And this one here should hit this end and we're going to pad in with the new zero N. So we're going to do that and we're going to move left. I really hope this makes sense. Now, what happens if we shift left by one position? This one here is going to be lost. It's going to be thrown off just like we have been throwing off zeros. Let's do that. Once we do, this one here was thrown off. You see, we had five ones. Now we are left with four ones and we have padded in with the new zero inside. Now, what would happen if you shift right back? If you do that, you're not going to get your one back. You're going to pad in with the zero because once you throw off a piece of data, you can never get it back. It is lost permanently. So this is a behavior you need to be aware of. If data is lost as a result of you shifting bits left or right, you can't get the data back just by doing the reverse operation. You've lost the data and you'll never get it back. This is something you should really drill in your mind. Okay, bit shifting is only supported for integral types because that's where it really makes sense. Bit shifting, floating points, doesn't make any sense. It's useful for nothing, so it's not supported in C++. Okay, so now that we have an idea about how left shifting and right shifting works, let's see how we can do this in C++. Here we have a value, it is a short int, and we have a value n, it is in hexadecimal here, it is ff0, so four ones, four ones, and four zeros, it is unsigned, so we can't really put in anything negative. We're going to print it out using std bit set, and uh, we're also going to print it in decimal, just so that you see what is really happening here. We're going to say that we are shifting right and we're going to store the data back in value. So we're going to shift right by one and we're going to do that in this parenthesis here. But you see that we are doing a static cast back to unsigned short end. The reason is bit shifting is not supported for types shorter than an integer. And we have seen this behavior in with weird integers. These bit shifting operators are the other operations for which if you have something smaller than an integer, the CPU won't really know how to do that operation. So the CPU is going to cast this to an integer, do the operation. And if you don't do any kind of conversion, be it explicit or implicit, you're going to get an end. That's why we are doing an explicit cast here and turning this integer back into an unsigned short end because that's what we really expect in this variable here. I hope this makes sense. If this is confusing in any way, please go back to the lecture where we talked about weird integral types. You're going to see this happening. We have seen that for arithmetic operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, but this is also the case for these shift operators. So now you know why we are doing this cast here. So we are moving our bits to the right 
And uh, once we do that, we're going to store the result back in value and we're going to print this out. This is what we're doing here. We can also shift left and uh, we do that by using this operator here that points to the left really. And we can print this out to see the result. We're going to try this out in a minute in Visual Studio Code. We can also shift several bits in one go. So for example, here we are shifting four bits to the left and we're going to store the result back in our value and we're going to print this out. And once you do these things a lot, you're going to notice a trend. Shifting right divides your number by two to the power of the number of digits that you have moved right. And shifting left multiplies by two to the power of the number of digits that you have shifted left. But one thing you should know is that if you throw any bits off, be it to the left or right, this rule is going to break and you're going to get some garbage data that doesn't really conform to this rule here. Another thing you should be careful about is that if you are trying to print results of bit shifting with STDC out, you should really wrap your thing within parentheses because if you don't do that, the compiler is going to be confused and you're going to get a few confusing errors. So do yourself a favor and wrap your things in parentheses when you print them out in STDC out like this. Okay, now you have a better idea of what this bit shifting thing is really about. Let's head to Visual Studio Code and see this in action. Here we are in our working directory. We are going to be working on this project, Shift Operators. We're going to grab our template project. Let's put that in here. And we're going to open this up in Visual Studio Code pretty fast. And we're going to open the main CPP file and we're going to get rid of things we don't need here. The first thing we're going to put in is our piece of data. We're going to have an unsigned short, we're going to call it value. Inside, we're going to have this literal here, which is in hexadecimal and it is unsigned. We are saying that this thing is unsigned, so we can't really put in negative numbers. And you see that we get these squiggly lines here saying that STD bit set is not included, so we're going to include that. And once we do that, we should see this error go away. Let's hit on this file icon here to have some more breathing room so that we can see our code better. And uh, what we're doing here is really nothing new. We're going to print the size of this variable and we're going to print this value in binary and in decimal. In binary, we are using std bit set as we have seen in a previous lecture. So if we print this out, we should be able to see our data. We're going to bring the terminal up. We're going to run the task to build with GCC. And if we run rooster, we should see this. So size of short end is two. And uh, this number in uh, binary is like this. You see that we have 16 bits here. And uh, just to be sure, notice that we have four ones like this and we have four zeros, which conforms to what we have in our hexadecimal number here. F is four ones and zero is four zeros. And this is the decimal representation of this number here. The first thing I want you to see is that bit shifting is not supported for types whose size is smaller than int. And the way we're going to prove that, we're going to do auto and we're going to say val and we're going to do value and we're going to shift this right by one bit. Okay, once we do this, I want you to guess the type that we are going to get here. Remember, value is unsigned short, and we have seen that it is two bytes in memory. So shifting it right shouldn't really change its type. But if we look at the type we have in val here, you see that it is a net. So what really happened, the compiler took this and cast that to int because it can't do this operation for something smaller than an int. So the compiler is smart enough to notice that limitation, it's going to take this value, cast it to an end and do the bit shifting operation. And the result is going to be stored in val. And because we are going through auto type deduction, the compiler is going to deduce an end. So what is happening here, the compiler is inserting an implicit conversion. And this may be hidden for many people and they wouldn't be aware of this reality. In this course, we're going to make this really clear and we're going to do an explicit cast to unsigned short end. And we are going to use static cast. You already know how to do that. We're going to 
test this to unsigned short ant. And uh, once we do that, we're going to have our value and it's going to be exactly what we expect. So what we're going to do here is turn this back to value because we want to be able to print this and see that we have shifted it to the right and be consistent with whatever we have in the slides. So let's shift left and we're going to print this after we shift left. The way we do that, we can print this and uh, we're going to go down here. And uh, if we run this, we should see another piece of data below what we have here and uh, numbers should have shifted to the left. Okay, so let's build with GCC. And if we run Rooster, you're going to see that our number has shifted to the left. So everything has moved to the left really. And uh, we have lost the zero here. And uh, this zero here has been thrown off and we have padded in a new zero. And notice our decimal. Our decimal has been multiplied by two because we've moved left by one bit. Let's move left again. So what we can really do is copy this and go down and do that. And let's say what we really are doing here, shift left by one bit. And that's what we're doing here as well. Let's get rid of these spaces also because they are confusing. And if we print again, we should see this moving again. So let's do that. We're going to run the task to build with GCC. We're going to run Rooster. And you're going to see that we have moved one bit more to the left. Let's do this again until we actually hit the end. You can go down again and paste this in. It's going to do the same operation. If we build with GCC as usual, we are going to run the program and we're going to see that we have moved one bit to the left again. And we are padding in zero as we move to the left. Let's move to the left and hit the end for this one here. We want this one to be in this position. So we're going to move left again. We're going to copy our code, move to the next line and paste it in. And if we build again, the world is going to go through. And if we run a rooster, we're going to see that now this one has hit the end here. So if we move left again, we're going to start losing our ones. Notice that we are multiplying by two every time we move to the left by one bit. So we're going to move one bit left again and you're going to notice what happens here. This trend here is going to break. We are actually going to get a smaller number than this. So let's do that. We're going to copy. We're going to go down and paste this in because we want to move left by one bit another time. So we're going to build with GCC. And once we do that, we're going to run Rooster and you see that we have something smaller than what we had in here. We had in 65,280, now we have 65,024. We have lost one bit and the number here goes down. Okay, now that we have lost one, the question that really pops to the mind, can we get back this one if we do a reverse operation? What if instead of shifting left, we shift right and try to get this back? Let's do that. We're going to copy this and modify this a little bit, of course. So we're going to shift right by one bit. And what we're going to do is a shift to the right. Okay, let's do that. And we're going to print this out as we usually do. And uh, if we build this with GCC as we usually do, we're going to run Rooster. And you see that what we get is not a one, it is a zero. So once you lose your data by moving left or right, you can't really get it back by doing a reverse operation. And we have talked about this in the slides. This is something you should really be aware of. And uh, this should really get you started on uh, playing with this bit shifting operations. It's nothing really scary. The most useful thing here, I think, is to be able to see these things moving around and it is going to make sense in your brain. So far we have been moving by one bet. So we have been multiplying by two by two by two. It is what you see here. But if we start shifting left, notice that here we had a 65,024. And if we shift right, we're going to divide this by two because we are moving by one bet. So we're going to be dividing by two to the power of one bet, which is dividing really by two. I really hope this makes sense. Okay, now you have seen how we can shift by one bit a lot of times. Let's try shifting by multiple bits in one go. Okay, so one thing we can try is actually copy what we have here. And we're going to 
paste it in, shift right by uh, four bits, for example. We can do that. And uh, we're going to shift right by four bits here. And uh, what we should expect to get is whatever number we had divided by two to the power of four. Two to the power of four is 16. And what we should expect in here is having whatever number we had divided by two to the power of four because we are shifting right by four bits. Let's try this out in a calculator first. So I am going to bring up my calculator and uh, really be sure about what we are doing here. Two to the power of four is 16. So let's do that. We're going to take 32,512, okay, and divide this by 16. Once we do that, we're going to get this value here. So after we shift by four bits, we should have 2,032 printed out here. So we have moved by four bits to the right. Let's try and build this with GCC. And if we run Rooster, Look at what we have, exactly the same thing we expect. I really hope now you have a better idea of how you can shift these bits around. You have a better idea of how you can print these things out to really see them on the console. And you know the effect of you shifting bits left and right. If you shift left, you are multiplying by two to the power of the number of digits that you have really moved around. If you are shifting left, you are dividing by two to the power of the number of digits that you have moved around. Okay, another thing I want to bring to your attention is that if you are using this shift operators together with STDC out, you need to be careful if you are printing things out directly. So what we could do is do STDC out and say value and uh, say we want to take a value and shift left by one bit. Why not? and do stdendl. And at the moment you do this, you're going to see that your compiler is really going to be confused. This operator here can also be used to input data. If you remember, we have seen this before when we talked about input and output. So if you want to do something like this, if it makes sense for whatever application you are doing, remember to wrap your shift operators in parentheses and the compiler is not going to be confused. And this is really going to be readable for whoever is going to be reading your code. So be mindful of this. It is going to help you a lot. This is really all we set out to do in this lecture. I hope you found it interesting. The main point was to be able to shift bits left and right. And we have been able to see that and we have seen a few examples of this. We are going to stop here in this lecture. And the next one we're going to learn about logical bitwise operators. Go ahead and finish up here and meet me there.